Shabbat Shalom, everyone. We know that there's no leader that is above criticism. No matter who they are, no matter what positions they take in areas that we agree with, we know that we must stand up to them when it comes to policies that are unjust or systems that are unjust. Even Moshe, even Moses, although the Torah tells us upon his death that there was no greater prophet than him, was not above criticism. We see that in this week's Torah portion. The narrative in Parsha Korach tells us of Korach's rebellion, but rebellion is such a negative term. I like to refer to it as a revolution. Rabbinic tradition, because he can put somebody up against Moses, who is uh, propped up in Torah as the greatest of all prophets, so rabbinic tradition must conclude that what Korach does is a chilu Hashem, a desecration of God's name. And the Torah tells us he and his followers, many of whom are swallowed up by the earth. But Korach's revolution, Korach's protest, is an important one and actually teaches us, I think, an important message about the sacred nature of protest itself. He demands that when there is something unjust in the system, that he could not stay silent. That he had to, and we have to, rise up to those in positions of power. And he helps us understand as well that there's power in numbers. Right, what the Torah tells us is, beginning with Numbers chapter 16, verse 2, Moshe, that he rose up in front of Moses, not just him, him, Vanashim, Mimne Israel, Hamishim, Matayim, Nisi, E, Eda, Kri, E, Moed, Ansheshem. That who were his followers? 250 in total decided to rise up against Moses, but they were leaders in their community, individuals who had positions of power in their own right. And when forced to act, when asked what they will do with their positions of power, with their own privilege, they chose to use it to make their voices heard. They chose to use it to protest. And what does Korach ultimately say? You know, rabbinic tradition tries to put down his message, but his message couldn't be more to the core of what our Torah tries to tell us. Kol ha'ida kulam kidoshim. Every single person is holy. Every single person is holy. So then why Moses do you, why Aaron do you try to prop yourselves up, put yourselves better than everybody else? Everyone is holy. That's a message we could all get behind. But the reason why he says it is because he's stuck in a system that doesn't recognize that everyone is holy. He's stuck in a system where he suffers, where his peers are suffering, and others are rewarded. Others are succeeding. Others are thriving. And he's just trying to survive. You know, some may look at this idea of kulam kol ha'ida kulam kiroshim, that everyone is holy, and suggest, you know, that is the Torah's equivalent to the statement, all lives matter. That in theory, that statement is one that we all agree on. But all lives matter, I believe, is bigoted in the sense that when we say all lives matter, we're not taking into consideration those who are actually most vulnerable in this system, this systemic and systematic racist society that was part of the founding of our country. When somebody says black lives matter, they don't say only black lives matter. Of course, all lives matter. But it's not all lives that are victims of police brutality. It's not all lives that are part of a caste system that props up some and tries to financially put down others. It's not all lives that incarcerates all races and ethnicities. We say Black Lives Matter is because those are the ones who we need to fight for to end systemic racism to end police brutality in a culture now so that we can get to the point where we recognize kol ha'ida kulam kiddushim. 
that ultimately everyone is holy. Because if we do not declare Black Lives Matter, then we don't believe that everybody is holy. If we treat everyone and everything as equal, when we're part of a racist structure, society that doesn't see everybody as equal, then we're just supporting a system that concludes that everybody's unequal. If we're faced with a situation where black people are disproportionately killed by police and we say all lives matter, then we're contributing to the problem. We say black lives matter because in our very own states, people of color are victims of police brutality at a three to one ratio. We say Black Lives Matter because in our very own states, in the juvenile justice system in New Jersey, there are 21 black children locked up for every white child. The worst statistics in any state in America. That's why we have to declare Black Lives Matter. And sometimes there are some leaders who declare a message that we agree with, even if the leader is not somebody that we agree with. But that can't stop us from focusing on the importance of the message itself. Korach is calling out a caste system that had been developed, a system that gives power and privilege to some and leaves others powerless. Rabbinic tradition concludes that Korach is all wrong. Midrash suggests that Korach was only using this as a way to take over for Moses, that it was more of a coup, that he was trying to become powerful and make Moses powerless. They blame Korach, actually. But in doing so, they ignore the importance of his message. Just because we may disagree with the messenger at times, we cannot deny the importance of the message. And so there are some in the Jewish community that may disagree with some leaders of the Black Lives Matter movement and say, we can't say Black Lives Matter or we need to distance ourselves with that movement that seems antithetical to what it means as a Jewish community to stand for justice, to pursue justice, to declare kol haida kulam kitoshim as Korach does, if we believe that everyone is holy, then we need to unequivocally focus on the message to stand with our siblings of color, with the members of our Jewish community of color, with our neighbors, say Black Lives Matter. You know, when Moses heard Korah call him out for this, the Torah tells us he falls on his face. He does so out of exhaustion. He does so, some suggest, because he's so upset with Korah for challenging his authority but I believe he does so because he was embarrassed, because he was ashamed, because he acknowledged that there was legitimacy to Korach's arguments. He acknowledged that he was actually a part of the problem, that he himself was guilty of promoting and protecting a structure that propped him up, but could only do so by putting other people down. We all need to acknowledge that. Those of us who identify as white need to acknowledge the white privilege that we've benefited from, no fault of our own, but from a system that props some up and puts others down. We must acknowledge that some of us, including our own institutions, have been complacent and part of the problem, benefit from a structure that puts down others and dedicate ourselves to ultimately upending that system and structure. That's why I'm proud to be rabbi of a community that's signed on to a statement that was published yesterday by Ben the Ark, Jewish Action, a statement that was signed on by over 400 synagogues and Jewish institutions. A statement that was approved unanimously by our executive committee in which we declare we are Jewish organizations and synagogues from across the racial and political spectrum, from different streams of Judaism whose members trace their lineage from countries around the world. And we speak with one voice when we say unequivocally, Black Lives Matter. We support the Black-led movement in this country that is calling for accountability and transparency from the government and law enforcement. 
We know that freedom and safety for any of us depends on the freedom and safety for all of us. The statement goes on to say that there are politicians and political movements in this country who build power by deliberately manufacturing fear to divide us against each other. All too often, anti-Semitism is at the center of these manufactured divisions. Jewish tradition teaches us that justice is not something that will be bestowed upon us. It is something that we need to pursue and that the pursuit itself is sacred work. We'll show up for each other every time one of us is targeted because of our differences and reject any effort to use fear to divide us against each other. The Black Lives Matter movement is the current day civil rights movement in this country, the statement concludes. And it is our best chance at equity and justice. By supporting this movement, we can build a country that fulfills the promise of freedom, unity, and safety for all of us. No exceptions. Our Torah reading tells us the importance of protest. To protest injustice against any and all who perpetuate such a system of injustice. And while some elected officials ignore this, hide in their bunkers, pretend such protests aren't happening right in front of them, or try to silence these protests with tear gas, or try to tweet law and order and deny that these protests are happening, rising up as Korach and his followers try to rise up against Moses. We know that protest makes a difference. And as some elected officials can't even bring themselves to say Black Lives Matter, we do because we know that protest makes a difference. We protest for justice for George Floyd for Rashard Brooks, for Breonna Taylor, whose killers have not yet been arrested, for Eric Garner and Michael Brown and Tamir Rice and Philando Castile and Sandra Bland and LaCoy McDonald, whose justice for them has been denied thus far. Black Lives Matter is a statement that declares, ultimately, that kol kulam kedoshim, that all of us are holy but our society is built on a system that doesn't see that, that props up some and puts down others, that protects some and harms others, that helps some succeed and causes others to suffer. So if we believe that all are holy, then we need to destroy that system. We need to protest. We need to say Black Lives Matter, and we need to back up our statement with actions. We need to focus on the message. We need to be part of the group of holy, sacred messengers. That's what I believe our Torah demands of us. That's the work, the holy work we must do. Now, it's our job, our obligation to get to work. Shabbat Shalom.